stop people if, if somebody was trying to come in and cause harm to the facility or our people. Um, another cultural change. Let's so talk about uh, accident investigation, incident investigation mm -hmm. out here. Uh, that's been, for the most part, a big overhaul uh, out here, has it not? Yeah, it's been a huge overhaul. And I uh, just actually did the management review on that process today. And uh, uh, we have partnered with uh, USW. USW has a program called Triangle for Prevention, which is an incident and accident investigation process. And as part of our 10 point plan with USW, uh, we've been implementing here, and we've got almost everybody through the site, uh, it's 90 plus percent of people, including myself, have been through the, the top training, travel prevention training. And uh, so we're all trained on the process, and then we have trained investigators, and it's a, it's a union-led but management-supported program. And uh, so it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal about, you know, getting the entire workforce together about assuring that from the smallest of incidents to the largest of incidents, we have that kind of learning culture, and we learn from it, and we take corrective action to make sure it doesn't occur again. Part of that the program is, is a unique aspect to it for what people are used to. Incident happens, management comes down and sits down across the guy and says, all right, Joe, what happened? That's not necessarily how it happens nowadays, is that Joe gets to first talk to one of the guys from the incident team from the union to say, so it may be a little more comfortable to you know, at least talk about what things. And it's also a lot of times guys from within the unit as well, too, so that you're able to, you know, folks are talking apples to apples and they know it in the same language is going on there. Yeah. How important is that part of that process it's now? It's a huge part. It's a huge part. So knowing that, uh, you know, union leadership and, and management are together to make sure, you know, we're not there to cause blame, but we're caused there to truly understand what occurred and make sure we take the appropriate corrective actions. And even to the extent, in, you know, in the, the near misses, the almost issues that could have occurred, uh, We've signed a joint letter that says there will be no discipline, there is no potential for discipline by reporting those. And that's a huge open access so that, uh, you know, we're encouraging folks, let's learn from those small things before they become an incident, let's get them investigated appropriately with the assurance that the, there's no discipline as a repercussion. And the fact, too, that near misses are now addressed. Yeah. Whereas, quite frankly, it was found way lacking that you know near misses were basically ignored. And yeah. There were times people would remember something three years, well, this happened over here, but it was never documented. Right. Uh, but nowadays, that stuff is documented, process goes through and goes, and and goes on, right? Our near miss to uh, recordable ratio is over 200 to 1 right now, which is phenomenal. Uh, you know, yeah. First of all, that's a new metric. And I can tell you when we first started the metric, we struggled to have you know, 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. um, near misses to, to recordable injuries, and, and now it's well over 200. It's, it's peaked over 300 to 1, which just shows people are willing to bring those issues forward and make sure that we learn from it before somebody does get hurt or something worse happens. Yeah, not necessarily meaning that there's more stuff happening out here. It's just being reported now. It's being reported, the small stuff. Right. All the small stuff's being reported, right? Um, it, now, on the flip side of that, some people may take a look at that and say, Man, it's just blocking us down. We're doing, you know, it's paying too much to minutia. What, what's your answer to someone who may criticize it for that, uh, that you, purposes? You know, if you understand the fundamentals of the safety triangle, yeah. it, it's working at that bottom end of the triangle. And so by paying attention to those small details and those small things, you're keeping the bad stuff from happening, right? So that's, that's the most important piece of the triangle. You've got to have layers of protection throughout there, but that's the, the real root of the safety triangle. Uh, uh, my kind of braggart part of this thing. I always, when we talk about TOPS, of, uh, because it is a national program yeah. for them, the fact that it's, that the man who runs it and their origins from it, and in fact, if I actually start Glenn across Earl. the way from Glenn, yeah. you know, a Texas City guy, and, you know, who really was the forefront of pushing that yeah. based on a lot of stuff he saw out here at the chemical side of things for over the years, and guy who ran for mayor and, you know, and everything else. It's a, it is kind of interesting that, uh, that that program... Basically, it comes full circle in a way, yeah. um, and back here and use. I got a really cool distinction. I was the first shell manager to put top in, and I was the first Motiva manager, and now I'm the first BP manager. Well, that's something else. That is really that. Uh, then see, that's uh, that's always something that's interesting to uh, to put it in. So yeah, it's, been, one, it's been hugely successful every time. Every time we've gone, I was going to say you you have found it. Huge advocate. Couldn't get it in quick enough. Um, and you know, and having that is, is that is is a large part of that too. Is that it convinces folks is that the old thought of well, 
safety just bogs us down. It's really when you make it part of the culture, it really doesn't bog you down. It makes you more efficient. It makes you work better. So that's a big piece of it. But the biggest piece, again, is union and management being on the same page, right? right? Is in, in the old traditional method, uh, I say traditional method, in the, in the bad old days, yeah. investigation was more of a blame game. Whoever touched it last, right? Mm -hmm. But TOF really focuses you on the systems of safety and what broke down in your systems to allow that event to occur. And it, and it brings the hourly workforce, the union workforce, and management together in those kind of common vernacular about systems of safety. And so you're not looking for blame, who were the people that were there at the time, but you're looking at how do I improve the system to keep that from occurring. All that that's going on in here, what are you seeing now as you go out, get beyond the fence line here, just in the community, how people regard BP? You know, there was a time that no matter, you know, what, there was always going to be the defenders and all those of the stream detractors. Yeah. But uh, just for that kind of middle ground, so are you finding more folks understanding now more, you know, of, of, of that or more confident in what's going on behind the fence line over here? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, fundamentally, and somebody, somebody drew the analogy that once, once you've violated the trust, people will never forget, but they will eventually forgive if you do the right 